Virabhadra. Lamp. Lamp. This morning we'll be discussing verses 15 through 19. It's a nice section. Do a little <clears throat> preview before we start. A little mini review is we've heard Prahlad express humility and express his profound faith in the bhakti process. He explained 
how the bhakti process brings an unqualified person to the position of being qualified, mainly by removal of ignorance. And we heard his understanding that the purpose, a purpose of the Lord's appearance is to bring fearlessness to anyone who remembers him. In this, Prabhupada's explanation is, in this world, these four animal propensities, anyone that has a material body has urges of the body. Fearing is one of them. Defending, sometimes he speaks, eating, sleeping, mating, and bhaya. So how to become fearless? Call the name of and remember Lord Nishingadev. one of the remedies that's for coming to fearlessness. And we heard these nice verses from 11th Canto Bhagavatam, how that fearlessness, absolute fearlessness can be achieved doing what we're doing right now. Of course, it's qualitative, but hearing and chanting the glories of the personality of Godhead 11th canto speaks like that. And then the obstacle to overcome is absorption, abhinivesh, absorption in things that appear to be, due to the influence of maya, things appear to be separate from Krishna. And when things appear to be separate from Krishna and you're in maya, what do you do? You try to be the enjoyer of those things. And so the remedy is becoming absorbed in Krishna, which is the position of Prahlad. He's, a, he's in transcendence. And that comes according to the Bhagavatam, Canto 11, Chapter 2, by association of one who is <coughs> absorbed in the personality of Godhead and from that person, one hears the glories of the Lord, as Prahlad did, heard from Narada. And then, through the mercy of Narada, he got the mercy of Lord Nishringadev. And so this is all review. We've heard that Prahlad, the very first uh, session, Prahlad had received Brahmagyan, meaning knowledge of transcendence, he was absorbed. We heard when he, the hand of Lord Nishingadev was touched upon his head, he achieved that place beyond liberation. Liberation meaning no material affinity. What would that be like? In the world, but no affinity for it. And beyond that, sorrow, pain, of yavasati, engaged in his activities, in his spiritual identity, although he was operating with the material body, the Prahlad Maharaj body, a little boy. So as we hear, and in the review even of these, or preview of these prayers, 15 through 19, let us remember that he is beyond liberation. He is perfectly situated in transcendence, in perfect knowledge, in perfect devotion, squeaky clean, no touch of any material contamination. And yet, he's speaking of himself as if he's contaminated. We covered this before, just like the example of Krishna Das Kaviraj saying about himself that he's more sinful than Jaghai and Madhai, Papishta, and lower than a worm in stool. Pretty low. Lower than that. 
And he's feeling those feelings. So we're getting a picture. If you feel low, sometimes we feel low, you're in good company. And don't expect that when you become high, you're going to feel high. You're going to feel, if you're qualified, you're going to feel feelings like Prahlad is feeling <laughs> and expressing. So, one of the themes in these verses for this morning is same topic, and he's going into it again, fear and fearlessness. Hey, it's, you know, one of the four. Eating, sleeping, mating, and fearing. So, <clears throat> Pallad is teaching us how to go to the position of fearlessness, although he's already in the position of fearlessness. He's in this Uttama Adhikari position, teaching us how to get there. <laughs> As if he's one of us. So we're going to hear, even in Prabhupada's purport, statements that say he's one of us. He realizes he's one of us. It's just his mood. You know, I've taken this position in a family of Asuras because of my karma. He didn't have karma. But he's speaking that way. And Prabhupada is writing in that way. Pra Prahlad is taking the position of one of us, is realizing, oh, because of my karma, I've taken this birth in the family of Asuras. And I'm looking for a solution. He's already there. There's no karma involved in his life. So bear that in mind as we're going forward. So 15 and 16, we're going to go through these verses, preview, <laughs> summarize. 15 and 16 <clears throat> speak, Prahlad speaks about his position of fearlessness towards the fearful features of Lord Shringadev, which the demigods and by Leela Shakti, Lakshmi Devi, she feels also fearful. He is not fearful. But then he expresses his fear. And his fear is bad association. He's born in a family of Asuras, and that's who he has to deal with. So we may also have such feelings, maybe not necessarily our family, but the workplace or here and there. We're moving around in a world that's bad association. That's his fear. We'll hear some more. I think this is just preview. Um, another feature, just a reminder, is he's transcendental, but it's part of his transcendental humility, not ordinary, not any humility that we might feel, but his transcendental humility. He's feeling protection, please. He's requesting the protection of instruction how to engage in devotional service. Next is text 17. He is expressing his feelings of detachment from um, other processes, from other things of this world, things that asuras or materialists are very attached to. He's detached from them. He's sealing the um, shortcomings of such a life. And then he's expressing his eagerness to hear. So, jnana vairagya. 
it's throughout the Vedas. It's a, a couplet, jnana vairagya, jnana vairagya, knowledge of detachment. It's in Bhagavad Gita. It's in, it's in all of the Vedas. So he's, he has Brahma Gyan. He's not going through the same things again and again and again and again like we do. Although we know better, we do it again and again. He knows better and he's not going to do it again and again. Knowledge of detachment. And in that detachment, knowledge and detachment, he wants the real thing and he wants the opportunity to hear. Knowledge and detachment helps go beyond detachment into the spiritual reality of our eternal position of service to Krishna. We have a theoretical notion of our eternal position of service to Krishna. The Prahlad's teaching us that knowledge and detachment when strengthened and really strong it's impetus to hear. And then following that impetus to hear, <clears throat> the only shelter is devotional service. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear other things. This is part of the, the, the process of surrender. He's surrendered, but the process of surrender is we want to hear those things that are going to help our Krishna consciousness, our, our devotion. And we don't want to hear other things, worldly things. We don't, we're not eager to hear those things. We're exposed to those things. But we're not eager to hear those things. We don't, there's detachment from when Gramya Kata is going on and who done it to whom in the news and in the social circles that we move and yada, yada, yada. There's detachment. There's eagerness to hear about the process of devotional service, which is my real shelter. Accept things favorable for bhakti, reject things unfavorable for bhakti. He's teaching by example, what does it look like to do that? Although he's already there. He's this Uttama Adhikari that's taking the position of somebody who is one of us. And speaking, he's educating us. Text 18 <clears throat> goes one step further. Tivra Bhakti. He, he doesn't want, so there's, we heard this verse, second canto Bhagavatam. <laughs> those that have no material desire, that's Prahlad, those that have all material desire, or somewhere in between, and those that want mystic power, Akama, Sarva, Kama. Those want liberation, excuse me. I want, I want out of here. So, whatever the position of Kama, desire, desire liberation, desire nothing, desire everything, Tivra Bhakti. Pallad's faith in the hearing process is rocket fuel. He's Tivra Bhakta Pallad. <clears throat> specific to the hearing. He wants to hear. He wants to hear from Lord Dev. And then when one has such a, an eagerness to hear and one hears, what do you do? You do what you hear. You, you make that your life and soul. This is another important teaching. Life and soul is the instructions that we receive from Krishna, in this case, Lord Nishingadev, and the devotees of the Lord, like Narada. And finally, um, he makes a comment, this ends the section, that other things that one may take shelter of, he's already dismissed them, but he comments that they may be of some temporary benefit, but they're impermanent. Whenever Whatever things we take shelter of, that to relieve one of this distressful situation of material implication, you know, adjust things. 
and it may make some temporary, but very, very temporary and very imperfect solution to the material circumstance in which we find ourselves. So it doesn't mean we don't do any of those things. We don't go to doctors, we don't, whatever it is. We, we take precaution and we take assistance of people that have knowledge of worldly things. But our faith isn't there. We do those things, but they're imperfect and impermanent and faith still remains in the bhakti process. How to live our lives in this complicated world. So through his prayers, he's giving those teachings from the position of an Uttama Adhikari who is speaking as if he's one of us. It's for our edification. Very nice. Very practical. At least for those who are devotees, practicing devotees. Here's the translation for text 15. My Lord, who are never conquered by anyone, the word in the verse is ajita. Lord Brahma also speaks of ajita. Shukadeva Goswami speaks of ajita. <clears throat> when he says, Lord um, Shukadeva Goswami says that previously I was absorbed in the happiness of Brahman. But when I heard the activities and form and qualities of Ajita, he who was not conquered, I lost all interest in that Brahman again and became absorbed in Ajita, the, the, the Lord of Transcendence, the, he who has spiritual form, not just Brahman effulgence, and his activities and his charming, all attractive activities. I abandoned Brahman realization in favor of that which is beyond Brahman realization. So that's what Pallad is saying here also. My dear Lord, who are never conquered by anyone, I am certainly <clears throat> not afraid of your ferocious mouth and tongue. His tongue is moving back and forth and back and forth, roaring your bright eyes like the sun. or your frowning eyebrows. In a moment, we'll have the image back again. Ooh. I do not fear your sharp, pinching teeth, uh, your garland of intestines, yuck, your mane soaked with blood, or your high wedge-like ears. Maybe you've seen a cat getting ready to pounce on a mouse or something. Their ears go up. Your high wedge-like ears. Nor do I fear your tumultuous roaring
that's um, recording that <clears throat> temples use when they have the appearance of Lord Nishringadev and he comes out of a pillar and he's moving around and chasing Hiranyakashipu and it just goes on for some time. Good sound effects. Nor do I fear your tumultuous roaring, which makes elephants flee to distant places, or your nails, which are meant to kill your enemies. That's what he's not afraid of. So, <clears throat> Prabhupada explains. A lion is very fearsome for other animals, but its cubs, not at all afraid of the lion. The water of the sea is certainly dreadful for all living entities on the land, but within the sea, even the small fish is not afraid. Why? Because the small fish has taken shelter of the big ocean. It is said that although great elephants are taken away by the flooding waters of the river, the small fish swim opposite the current. So the devotee is in his element when the roaring of Lord Ishringadev and all these other things. He's unafraid, pressed for a lot. We, we heard, just to repeat, the others are afraid because it's induced by the Supreme Lord that they are afraid to enhance the adbhuta rasa, this astonishment rasa. Therefore, <clears throat> although the Lord sometimes assumes a fierce appearance to kill the duskritis, the devotees worship him. Keshavadrita Nada Hari Rupa Jaya Jagadisha Hare. The devotee always takes pleasure in worshiping the Lord and glorifying the Lord in any form, either pleasing or fierce. That's text 15. So he's not, that's what he's not afraid of. Now here's what he's afraid of. <clears throat> um, this section here in red, Vadha Svakarma Bhir Ut Ush Ushatama. I'm very much afraid of my conditioned life within this material world. He's afraid of the bad association of demoniac persons in his community, the Daicha community. And then he's praying for what he already has. This section here, Apavarga Sharanam. These two words, Pavarga and Apavarga. I'd like to speak about it. Pa Varga is a term in Sanskrit grammar when you're learning the Sanskrit alphabet. I, don't, I haven't learned the Sanskrit alphabet, but I've heard Prabhupada say this so many times. Pa, pa, ba, ba, ma. Part of the Sanskrit alphabet. And so those Pa Varga, five, Ma, the last one is death, Pa is fear. Pa, pa, ba, ma. So, um, parish, engaging in intense, fruitive activities, foaming at the mouth, fear of death, and then death, or fear of the circumstance of life. So, a pavarga is beyond that. And your lotus feet are the sharanam, the shelter that carries one to that position of apavarga. So he's requesting the Supreme Lord to give him shelter of his lotus feet. He's already did it. 
authority there. He's got more than there. But he's speaking as if he's not. This is his humility and also his opportunity to instruct us. <clears throat> oh, most powerful. You remember Sat Aishvarya? Avatar. Oh, most powerful, insurmountable Ajita, Lord, who are kind to the fallen souls like me. I have been put into the association of demons as a result of my activities. I have bad karma. He's speaking that way. And therefore, I am very much afraid of my condition of life within this material world. Fear. So the request. <clears throat> when will that moment come when you call me to the shelter of your lotus feet? More than called him. He came and gave his lotus feet. But he's speaking in this way. <laughs> Which are the ultimate goal for liberation from conditional life. Apavarga. And we heard about this Apavarga position. Well, I'll say it again. Liberation is one of the ten topics of the Bhagavatam, which are described in Canto 2, Chapter 10. They're listed and then they're described. And when Shukadeva Goswami is describing what liberation is according to the Bhagavatam, it's beyond neutrality, it's beyond nirvana, it's beyond material cessation. What's that? Swaropain of Yavastati. It's the activities of the living entity with his full spiritual form. That's the teaching of liberation given in the Bhagavatam. Poor followers of Buddhism that rejected the Vedas, they, they, they don't even get to hear about it. They only hear about material cessation. What's so beyond material sensation, real Upavarga sharanam, they don't know. They don't know the sharanam part, and they don't know the upavarga part. They only know neutrality. At best. <clears throat> so Prahlad is saying here, this is Vishwanath, saying, I am afraid of the bad association which produces aversion to you. So beware. You may be a very elevated devotee. You may not be a very elevated devotee. In either case, beware of bad association following the footsteps of Prahlad. And you can't just go into hibernation or become a cloistered person. You know, you to say, you go to school. Oh, you go to work or you go to the marketplace, or you're a sannyasi and you get on an airplane. Somebody was sharing this with me. They recently traveled back from India, and their comment was, I was surprised, because this is somebody that mixes with worldly people because of their profession. You know, what you have to endure when you have these international flights, all kinds of bad stuff. And it's like all around you. So devotees, it's, you know, one of the worst things about international travel is they have, they've really boosted up the whole thing with movies. And you gotta like, what do you do? Because everywhere it's movies. And it's, you know, it's all, a lot of it is action movies. And it's just violence and violence and violence and sex and violence and violence and violence Ooh. contaminating and, and, and anyway fortunately the music is you don't hear the audio part but and the music is similarly contaminating and polluting anyway bad association everyone everyone so <clears throat> Prahlad is saying that's where I'm afraid now, 
Why is he afraid? I, this is a, a Prabhupada story, probably told 25 times, but it's, it's appropriate for this. <laughs> Prabhupada taught this to the devotees, that we, he was praying to Krishna always to protect him from bad association, protect him from maya. Here's the story. In Prabhupada's schedule, daily schedule, in the afternoon, he would see some VIP that would come, was scheduled to come to see him and have some discussion. If there wasn't somebody like that, he had um, room darshan. So one afternoon in New York, that was what was going on, a room darshan, and Prabhupada was, my understanding was, he was just having fun. He was asking the devotees, what's the difference between you and me? And the devotees were having fun, saying, oh, Prabhupada, you're this, and oh, Prabhupada, you're that, and then laughter, and then oh, Prabhupada. Then it became time for going for the evening class, so Prabhupada said, the difference between you and me is, you can fall down, and I cannot. And off they went to the temple room and he came before the deities, offered obeisances, and with folded hands was saying some prayers. His secretary or servant was standing next to him. Notice Prabhupada was saying some prayers. Then he went to the Vyasasan, Jai Radha Madhava, gave class and went back to his quarters after class. So that devotee asked Prabhupada, may I ask, it looked like you were saying some prayers when you were offering, coming before the deity. May I ask, what were those prayers? And Prabhupada's answer was, I was praying to Krishna that I never fall prey to Maya, that he always protect me in devotional service. And then the devotee said, but Prabhupada, you said before the class, the difference between you and us is you can't fall down. And then Prabhupada said, now you know why. I'm always praying to Krishna like this. Please protect me from the bad association. So that means shelter at his lotus feet. That's exactly what he's asking for. Prabhupada's explanation. <clears throat> everyone, that's everyone, is put into conditional life according to his karma. Therefore, Pallad Maharaj, representing all other conditioned souls, admits that he was put into life among the asuras because of the results of his karma. Now, that's his expression of humility. And how long can that go on endlessly? The Lord is known as Kripana Vatsala. He's Bhakta Vatsala, but he's also Kripana. There's Brahmana and Kripana, these two terms, Prabhupada would say. Brahmana has merit and uses it properly, and a Kripana has merit and uses it wrongly. The Lord is known as Kripana Vatsala because he is extremely kind to the conditioned souls. The Lord is extremely anxious to deliver the conditioned souls, and he goes on. So the image is showing how he makes himself available to others through knowledge. And our founder Acharya and the predecessor Acharyas were very keen on giving this knowledge to the conditioned souls. You know, we call it book distribution. There in the back of the temple room was all this pile of books. And we're meant to distribute it. It's a fundamental pillar of the Hare Krishna movement. Given to Srila Prabhupada by Bhakti Siddhanta and then the followers of Prabhupada, that's us. We do it too. To deliver the condition. So this is the Lord's desire. It's our Acharya's desire because it's the Lord's desire. 
Next text. 17. So in, highlighted in red is this. Vadame tava dasya yogam. Vadame tava dasya yogam is vada. Please instruct me in devotional service. And then this long line here. <coughs> Dukha shadham tad api dukham atad yaham. Although there are many remedies, so dukkha, how to get free from miserable life, it brings more misery, and it's more miserable than the miserable life. Called material progress. Without giving so many examples, exploiting the resources of nature so that we can have more comfortable living and then suffering because of exploitation of resources of nature. Water that's not pure, air that's not pure, even you grow things from the ground and it's full of contamination because of pesticides and so many other things so that go organic. Anyway, the, the problems, the solution, of, so there's pests that eat your things that you grow. So pesticide, anyway, the, the, the solutions are more problematic than the problems. The misery is more difficult with the solutions to the misery than the misery. Therefore, the Lord says, devotional service. He's pointing to... He's giving knowledge of transcendence and there's only one solution, that's devotional service. Now, in devotional service, we do practical things in the world, in, in our relationships with, with one another. So, but he's giving this path to transcendence beyond misery, beyond fear into the realm of fearlessness. So text 17, oh, great one, oh, Supreme Lord, because of combination with pleasing and displeasing circumstances, world of duality, and because of separation from them, the temporality of whatever the duality is, one is placed in a most regrettable position within heavenly or hellish planets as if burning in a fire of lamentation. We lament for what we don't have and when we lose what we have, we lament. Misery and misery. And some sense of enjoying while you have that temporary. But that's also misery, we'll hear. Although there are many remedies by which to get out of miserable life, any such remedies in the material world are more miserable than the miseries. And he's not just tongue-in-cheek. He's not exaggeration. It's the nature. By design, it's the nature of the material world. So a slight improvement is follow theistic conduct. But in theistic conduct, that takes you to the heavenly planets, and these same dualities of misery are also there. It's not a solution. Therefore, I think... That the only remedy is to engage in your service. We heard it before, he's saying it again. Now with clear thinking, compelling knowledge and detachment, kindly instruct me in such service. So in his purport, Prabhupada speaks like this. Material opulence may be somewhat pleasing for the time being but to come to that position, he has to accept many miseries. We don't need to elaborate. Prabhupada would elaborate, but it's, it's in the purport. So what to do? <clears throat> the fact is that material life 
Whether one is miserable or happy, both conditions are miserable. Someone is declaring, I am free. America. All created beings are born and created by their creator with inalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I'm free. Are we free? So if real happiness is wanted, happy, blissful life, one must become Krishna conscious and constantly engage in the transcendent loving service of the Lord. That is the real remedy. And service to the Lord is given by the representative of the Lord, the devotee pictured here, Srila Prabhupada, giving Krishna's mercy to eager recipients and abundant knowledge. I'm looking at this stack of books in the corner. Abundant knowledge, ways of devotional service. Here is Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's expression. It's a little complex, but the Lord doesn't say this, but he's paraphrasing. Lord Nishingadev may be saying, what will you do by serving my feet? Please enjoy the happiness from the wealth of the three worlds. Prahlad is going, no. I experienced the fire of lamentation through birth, which is separation and attainment of unwanted and wanted objects in all wombs, even in the body of a king, this lamentation is present, but the Lord says, but there are many remedies for the fire of lamentation. Prahlad, the remedy for suffering only produces more suffering. By thinking that I am happy, atad diya, atad diya, thinking I'm happy through the temporary. Even in the body of a pig, I wander about thinking I'm happy. Please tell me the method of being your servant. By which method should I attain your service? Now he knows. He's already there, but he's inquiring. He's eager to hear. Please tell the truth. If I have service to you, I will have no suffering Oops. at all in any womb. So there's this story, it's not told in the purport, but the story of Indra. Indra offended Brahaspati. So he got smashed. Take birth as a pig on earth. So he took birth as a pig on earth. And wandering about, after some time, uh, Brahma came to him and said, come on back to the heavenly realm. And Indra's reply was, how can I come back to the heavenly realm? I have my piglets and my wife, and I'm enjoying the stool. Everything's fine. So he stayed. And we also stay thinking, well, there's some difficulty, but I've got my responsibilities, and I've got, there's some enjoyment here, and By good fortune, one comes in contact with a devotee who teaches the ways of devotional service, and there is an alternative to the embodiment, the attachment to the embodiment of all the temporary things that bring us misery. And we don't want the misery, we want the attachment to the temporary. So, through the medium of devotional service, Prahlad is teaching, one can go beyond that limitation. Now, <clears throat> two more verses in this section. <laughs> Prahlad is looking to Lord Brahma. He wants the association of great souls and engagement in devotional service in their association. And 
there's this teaching that by that method, we heard it before, but the influence of the modes of nature will no longer act by that method of association with devotees and hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. He has great faith in the hearing and chanting of the glories of the Lord, which he's doing and which great devotees like him do. And he wants to follow the ways of the predecessor souls. In this case, he's referring to Lord Brahma. And then I'm longing for that day when I can go beyond nescience. He's already beyond nescience. His ignorance is gone. But he's aspiring enthusiastically for that situation. Oh, my Lord, Nishingadev, by engaging in your loving transcendental service in the association of devotees who are liberated souls, I shall become completely uncontaminated by the association of the three modes of material nature and be able to chant the glories of your Lordship who are so dear to me. Glories are dear and the Lordship is here. I shall chant your glories following ex Tivra Bhakti, following exactly in the footsteps of Lord Brahma and his disciplic succession in this way. I shall undoubtedly be able to cross the ocean of nations. Now, he has faith, he's already there. He has faith in the process of Bhakti. He's speaking as if he's one of us, giving us the way to become like him, the Uttama. Bhakta, Pallad. And great souls similarly did the same thing. By example, they taught and encouraged us to follow their example. Prabhupada writes in the purport, <clears throat> attachment for glorifying the Lord by hearing and chanting the holy name and activities of the Lord certainly brings one to the position where Material contamination is absent. Now we heard that yesterday evening from that verse 11, Canto, Chapter 2, Text 33, where Kavi, one of the uh, Naviogandras, is teaching King Nimi how to go beyond fear. So fear and material contamination are part of the same thing. Fear is part of material contamination. And fearlessness, which is the theme of this section, becomes possible through devotional service, properly performed. So we're in the sadhana bhakti stage of devotional service. We should do with faith because it will carry us beyond material contamination and beyond the condition of fear. We don't like fear. We may like the objects of attachment, which are the sources of misery, we don't like the misery. But we're attached to the sources of our misery. So what do you do when you're attached to the sources of your misery? What do you do when you have an addiction problem? Go to the 12-step method. <laughs> and in that 12-step method, there's faith in God. And our faith in God is best nourished by this process of hearing. Prabhupada writes, accepting the thoughts of exalted authorities through disciplic succession is certainly much easier than the method of mental speculation by which one tries to invent some means to understand the absolute truth. The best process is accept the instructions of the previous acharyas and follow them. Then God-realization and self-realization become extremely easy. So now we're going to hear Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, who wrote a nice commentary on this. And it's a little complicated, but here we go. Lord Nishringadev speaking to Prahlad. Though you attain service to me, still you should seek out some other solution 
for the miseries of material life. did not really encourage him like that, but Prahlad reveals some anger. Why are you speaking like that? <laughs> Your pure devotee is famous as a servant of Narada. I, Prahlad, do not accept Gyan or karma like others. Even in my dreams, chanting your pastime, I surpass the gunas. I have surpassed the gunas. If I have surpassed the gunas, what's the question of so-called suffering or the solution for suffering? The Lord says, but one sees suffering in devotees also. So you're due a devotee and you got to deal with your suffering. So pick up something that's going to do hedging. Don't just put everything in bhakti. Do some things that are going to take care of your suffering in addition to bhakti. A lot. I will quickly, completely cross over the pain of separation from you, attaining direct service to you, will not be delayed long because of the mercy from chanting about you. I will associate with your associates whose abodes are the lotuses of your feet and they will bring me to you. Brahma has also glorified you. Since these topics are authorized by him, there is definite value for anyone in chanting your glory. He has a lot of faith. Tivra Bhakti. You are the master of the devotees having Madhurya Rasa, Sakya Rasa, and Dasya Rasa, like me. Vishwanath is a Rasika Bhakta, so he has to say something that's about Rasa. And the last verse from this section and for this morning, <clears throat> Prahlad prays, My Lord Nishringadev, O Supreme, because of a bodily conception of life, embodied souls neglected and not cared for by you cannot do anything for their betterment. What remedies, whatever remedies they accept, although perhaps temporary beneficial, are certainly impermanent. So now, it's not like a compromise. Well, do something. Temporarily, so it's acknowledging. And people argue this way. I've heard people argue this way. Yeah, but... So, temporarily, some something, some mitigation, temporary mitigation of the pain of misery in material existence. And it's temporary. Whatever betterment may come. Prabhupada's explanation. For example, a father and mother cannot protect their child. A physician and medicine cannot relieve a suffering patient. Doesn't mean we don't go to doctors and we don't care for our children. And a boat on the ocean cannot protect a drowning man. Ultimately, the shelter is the Lord. And one who takes shelter of the Lord is protected. Fear and fearlessness, theme of this section. And protection and beyond miseries of material existence. As long as you're, you're in material existence, they're there. But you know, bhakti carries one beyond to the other side, to the other side of neutrality, the other side of nirvana, to the other side of time the other side of the moment. Bhakti is, is like that. Very powerful. This is, the guarantee, this is guaranteed, as the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita. Kaunteya pratijani hi na me bhakta pranashyati. O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. We're getting Prahlad Maharaja's association just by this process of hearing. I've heard it. 
and I've heard Prabhupada speak about it, that some people say, oh, Arjuna had the opportunity to associate with Krishna and he became perfected, but I'll never have that opportunity, so what's the hope? Hopelessness. And Prabhupada addressing that said, no, because one who hears from a qualified person, from spiritual master, what Krishna's words are, Krishna is speaking. The devotee says, surrender unto Krishna. Surrender unto me. And that's Krishna speaking. One can hear Krishna speaking by hearing one who is transparently representing that sound vibration of Krishna speaking. It's Krishna speaking. This is Prahlad speaking. We're associating with... The Bhagavatam gives us this amazing opportunity to associate directly with Krishna and his pure devotees who are teaching the ways of devotional service. <laughs> what to speak of the Bhaktivedanta purports, which are taking the commentary of predecessor acharyas and transparently representing them. These books are powerful. Take shelter. Don't wait for those that are verminically inclined to read for you, then you hear from them. But you can do that. That's beneficial. Read Prabhupada's books. Everything is there. One can associate with Prahlad, one can associate with Vishwanath Charkavarti Thakur. You've never met Srila Prabhupada, but you can associate with Prabhupada through sound vibration. You can directly associate in that way. In those instructions, one says, well, you need someone to guide you. You need a spiritual master. You need to take initiation from a current link in the disciplic succession. But that's in that sound vibration too. We're members of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness and we have all of us take shelter of our founder Acharya. That's, it's his teachings and it's his deity worship and his process of everything that we do wearing of tilak and kunti mala and everything that we do it's him so we hear from him and one of the most outstanding ways there's many through recorded lectures but his books especially especially because when Prabhupada was writing his books he knew he was arranging that it would be translated in languages all around the world. I forget the current number of how many translations of Bhagavad Gita as it is, close to a hundred in different languages in the world and profusely. So he was preaching to the world. So what he may say in a room conversation or a morning walk, even in a lecture, it's his books. The books are the primary source of reference very important please read Prabhupada's books distribute Prabhupada's books and please read Prabhupada's books and then as we're doing now in the association of others we're discussing what's in Prabhupada's books and hearing and chanting and tushan ticha raman ticha and the subject matter for kata is that gold standard of how do we properly understand something. It's Srimad Bhagavatam and Prabhupada's purports in Srimad Bhagavatam following the line of our predecessor Acharyas. Okay, so we have some time for some discussion. Comments or questions? In the front? Right here. Um, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, what I was thinking. Um, 
In one of the verse, I think it was 17th, um, where it says that uh, knowledge and detachment is an impetus to hearing. Yes. Now, this is, uh, in a way, opposite to the one where we say knowledge and detachment comes with the bhakti. And well, it's, not, it's, not in, it's not in contradiction. Let's do this. When you read Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, are you searching for knowledge and detachment so you can get a foothold in bhakti? Or are you searching for bhakti and from that comes knowledge and detachment? It's the second one. No, that knowledge and detachment help one further become interested in bhakti. When you first started Krishna consciousness, all kinds of other conceptions were there right. to, to this lifetime and who knows how many lifetimes of conceptions of things. So because we're followers of Srila Prabhupada, we've heard bhakti, 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 from which comes knowledge and detachment, which gives impetus to go further and hear further and more deeply and with greater clarity. There's not a contradiction. You know, it, 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 the, the, apparently the question is which comes first, the chicken yeah. or the egg? Yeah. Does knowledge and detachment come first and then bhakti or bhakti and then knowledge and detachment? Bhakti, if you're associated with Rupa Goswami's followers, bhakti, and from that comes knowledge and detachment which gives further impetus for hearing. Hear more intently and attentively and deeply and so and in the beginning it looks like knowledge and many people that's what they're looking for according to Bhagavad Gita four types of pious people they want knowledge they go to Bhagavad Gita they get knowledge Rupa Goswami says in the beginning this is nectar devotion knowledge may help one get a foothold you know knowing what's what. Again, think of your own autobiography. What's what? How clear was it before you started reading? So a foothold is through reading, and that's the initial. And then, But you, it goes way beyond that initial because bhakti awakens. And then it's bhakti. And we're interested in reading Prabhupada's books not for getting knowledge and detachment. We want to nourish bhakti and then come further. Okay? Yeah. One more thing. We also talked about pa, fa, ba, bha, ma. Yeah. So what does pa and fa stands for? I, I, can, I have to see if I can recall. Huh? Dana. Foam. When one works very hard, fruitive activity, one has to work very hard. The example that's given is like a horse. Mm -hmm. Foam comes in the mouth and people that work very hard just work and work, you know, pain them. And pa? Pa, 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 ha, ma. Pa is baya. Yeah. No one remember ba. Huh? No, no. We I got ba and B -H -A, ma. B h a, paya. Yeah, the first then ma. One. Bondage, banda. Like be, being in jail, you know. Through that fruit of activity, we're bound by the reactions of our fruit of activity. Okay. Bondage, banda. That's my me memory, anyways. Mm. Okay. The, the 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 PowerPoint presentation shows there's this guy behind bars, looking very afraid. Be bound. Mm. Why is fruitive work? Engage in fruitive work, foaming at the mouth, bound by that fruitive work. 
พะพะบะพามาราชคุณพูดถึงเรื่องของพระลาดมีความกังวลเรื่องความผิดของบริษัทเป็นของครอบครัวดังนั้นถ้าเกิดในงานงานเช่นนี้คุณจะทำอย่างไรกับบริษัทผิดของบริษัทใช่ไหมคุณจะทำอย่างไรกับบริษัทผิดของบริษัทใช่ไหมคุณจะทำอย่างไรกับบริษัทผิดของบริษัทใช่ไหมคุณจะทำอย่างไรกับบริษัทผิดของบริษัทใช่ไหมคุณจะทำอย่างไรกับบริษัทผิดของบริษัทใช่ไหมคุณจะทำอย่างไรกับบริษัทผิดของบริษัทใช่ไหมคุณจะทำอย่างไรกับบริษัทผิดของบริษัทใช่ไหมคุณจะทำอย่างไรกับบริษัทผิดของบริษัทใช่You're in a bad place, and you have to be there. So, what do you do to like not? It depends on how bad the place is. Mm. Supposing you're you're in an abusive relationship, mm. you don't stay. Mm. That's what you do. Yeah, but like in terms of work, it's your okay, duty to work. Okay. But we talked about it yesterday. Yes, we did. But I'm be I'm curious. <laughs> be a devotee. Yeah. And in, in incremental ways, you come. You know, you don't like startle everybody, but be who you are, and in incremental ways, help them become accepting of who you are. And if it if it's the kind of workplace where your being who you are is something they can't tolerate, you get out because it's abusive. If they want to exploit you or make you, you know, consciously convert you to become like them, if they're like letting you be you, then be you. And if it, they want to make, because it's exploitation, especially for a woman, that's where it goes. So you get out, but be a devotee. You don't compromise. So, so supposing it's it's school instead of your situation. You know, somebody's going to school, and there's, you know, it starts at earlier and earlier ages. But you know, many devotee. I'm thinking of many devotees that, when they graduated from school, they went off to college and they saw stuff and were exposed to stuff that was horrific. Because many. Many places, entering freshmen have to live in dorms. They don't. There isn't an option, and the dorm life is so. What do you do? Be a devotee. And supposing people say, "Oh, we shun you because you have values that are different than our values." What's wrong with you know, etc. Peer pressure kind of things. Be a devotee, and if it's just you know threatening and bullying and toxic like that, you get out. Depends. Thank you. Circumstance. <coughs> In the back. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, so the ultimate shelter is Krishna, mm. um, but I am a little uh, confused by the examples for uh, the temporary remedies. Um, for example, uh, if one finds in himself drowning in the ocean <coughs> and there is a boat. Um, The, the, that is the point is it's temp it's, it can, it, it's temporary and limited. You get a boat comes along and saves the drowning man. Fantastic. Now you're still in material existence. What's that method to get out of material existence? Not a boat. And even the boat may sink. It's temporary, limited. So it's not don't get on the boat because it's not the ultimate. Don't go to a doctor because you know, we 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 engage ourselves with the temporary in practical and careful ways, but not where our faith goes to the temporary, and that's our place of shelter. 
युक्त वैराग्य युक्त वैराग्य इन सर्विस टू कृष्ण नॉट दस नॉट माई द बोर्ड इज नॉट माई शेल्थर इट्स समथिंग आई एक्सेप्टिंग इन अ टेम्पररी वे रेकग्नाइजिंग इज टेम्पररी बिकॉज ऑफ द सर्कमस्टेंस इट्स द राइट थिंग टू डू द बोर्ड कम्स टू सेव यू गेट ऑन द बोर्ड विच मे ऑल्सो सिंक and then you're still in material so it's temporary and imperfect we accept it recognizing what it is temporary and and imperfect we're living in the world and we make practical arrangements living in the world recognizing that's my real shelter is krishna's eternal service now there's an adjustment of consciousness but so the adjustment of consciousness is bhakti it comes about from association and hearing and chanting and association with those that have that shelter to offer us through sound vibration like prahlad yes over here <coughs> har krishna maharaj uh, one thing come to my mind is um, how does uh prahlad maharaj uh, uh reconciled the form of narsingha dev so did he um seen or like what is how he how he connected that he is the supreme lord uh, and what form did he worshiped because he was in the demonic group and uh, without form he worshiped the supreme lord or like uh, i'm trying to connect the dots like how he uh, connected uh, the to the form of the nursing dev that's the form the lord showed that's how he connected the lord <coughs> bear in mind as we are going through this he is a vaikuntha vasi vaikuntha vasi meaning aishwarya right mm-hmm. opulence sad aishwarya he has all six opulences in full pralad has faith in that aspect of the supreme lord his vaikuntha feature and, and amongst even amongst the vaikuntha features forms that appear in this world we heard of the very the first morning <coughs> that's the category of avatar that lord shringadev falls in so he the lord shringadev is showing that form to prahlad and i mean he's many things he's he's upholding the benediction given by lord brahma he's not breaking the benediction of lord brahma which is you can't be killed by this that and the other thing so he accepts the form to match and uphold the words of Brahma but it's an eternal form it's not clay and that's the form that Prahlad worships just like Ram is the form that Hanuman worships eternally i just that's connect the dots it's it's the form that Prahlad worships Now, could another form have been presented? Sure, Lord has is not bound, but He showed that form, worshipable form. And our understanding, because we're Krishna bhaktas, is that form of Nishinga Dev is a feature of Krishna, and Krishna is the source of everything in all forms. ramadi murshi shukala niyamain atishtam na na avataram is one of krishna's forms we're not confused by that our shelter goes to krishna even we're hearing the glories of lord shriya dev does that help yeah. yes maharaj okay. thank you
good day. Am I? I'm whistling. I'm too close to the audio system. It's going to whistle. Um, was whistling in the sound booth, so I've moved over. Um, about book distribution. Book distribution. Yes. <laughs> um, three little thoughts, and I'd like your feedback. Um, you were speaking to the ladies here a moment ago, and the thought came to mind that there's a young lady put in a very unique position back about a year and a half ago that she's a chaplain with the U.S. Army military. And it was noted in the paper that she was going to represent the Hindu mothers that had boys in the service overseas and here in the States for the U.S. military. Um, I realize that she's working in a, what is called, family service area for those that have family connected to the military. My um, thought and question is, um, has anyone or any temple group thought that perhaps she could use support of obtaining books to give to our military families that ha have been brought up in the in the faith in the inner faith of both she represents I believe the Reformed Presbyterians as a female minister but due to her Hindu upbringing she has been allowed to be a Hindu chaplain within the military representing the families of the military. So my question is, Is has anyone um, thought of maybe helping to get her books, uh, the Gita and et cetera, so that she can have something to distribute to our military families? I don't know the person. I do know devotee men and devotee women in the military that distribute books to the military. Okay. And I know that there's rules in the military. Oh, yes. And they have to abide by the rules in the military. Yes. And so to what liberty there is for distributing transcendental knowledge of a particular persuasion, this one, that one, or the other one, in the military, I'm sure it has rules. But because I know from the, those devotees, both men and women, that they do following the rules. Okay. Um, so speaking of chaplains in general, it's to my understanding that there is an ISKCON chaplain corps that started back a few years ago and the person I met was from the Chicago area. Have you heard of any such uh, ministerial outreach group with ISKCON that are Not a group. specifically I, I, I chaplain? I know persons who are in fact one of them is in the room who is a chaplain. Raise your hand please. Maybe they're with their daughter in the the hall across the way, maybe preparing for the drama. Okay. But there are other persons who are chaplains. This is at a university, but you know, a Hindu chaplain at a university. And those, mm -hmm. But is there a chaplain sangha or association or group? Probably not. It's just random. And then, you know, historically, there have been a number of chaplains that I'm aware of and probably a number that I'm not aware of and there isn't, to my knowledge, a 
Hindu chaplain association amongst the devotees. But there are persons that have that service. And again, they have the rules. Mm -hmm. They have the restrictions, which they are obliged to abide by. And it's just not, you know, there's restrictions. It's not just, you know, unlimited freedom to, now that they're a chaplain, to put forward their particular faith, even amongst Hinduism, because there's, mm -hmm. there's sub, 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 so many divisions. So they have rules to prevent that kind of uproar from people that say, what about ours instead of theirs? Oh, there, I don't, I, you know, I don't know what those rules are. But um, your question was, is there a chaplain association group? Not that I know of. I know that Australia, a couple of years ago, four years ago maybe, uh, at that time the leadership or a leadership conference for ISCOM was there, and it was brought to light that in Australia, because they now have a structured um, educational system uh, within can I, I'd, I'd ISCON like that they can now go into the hospitals. I'd like to interrupt and say institutional structures for such things is not really the purpose of our morning class. We could have right, an offline thank you. discussion about thank what's you. our institution doing about something. This morning class is, is for our, what Prahlad's teachings are. I understand it's on the topic of book distribution, but it's an institutional question. Uh, something else? Yeah. Um, Maharaj, as we are hearing about uh, glories of pure devotional service, I was thinking um, in places where, um, for example, college outreaching, where students are not ready um, to directly go to the platform of pure devotional service, yeah. is there a place to um, recommend mode of goodness, like coming to the mode of goodness sure. as an intermediate well, strip? <clears throat> yeah. Mode of goodness, or even narrow it down and say, a quality of goodness. And promote in that forum, a quality of goodness. Compassion. Truthfulness. And then you take that quality, it's called value education in the secular world, and then you connect that to spirituality. And then spirituality to, you know, that which gives shelter to eternal spirituality, not temporal, with a spiritual conception of what that quality really is that sustains over time when there is shelter. Very practical. It, it's not only in the, in, the, in the medium of college, it's in the medium of yoga outreach. <laughs> because there's, there's some allergy to God in amongst many who are doing yoga. They want spirituality without God. A lot of people, but they know spirituality without God. So you give values and then connect it to spirituality, connect it to God. And some people don't want to go there, so you do it you know, carefully. And find out people that are, anyway, you get the idea. But yes, there's a platform for doing that. It makes the, the Shuddha Bhakti message approachable in steps for those who want to take those steps. And it doesn't scare people away or it doesn't shut down the venue because you went right, to, right away to Shuddha Bhakti. Okay? Thank you. One question here, and then I think it's breakfast time. Raise your hand again. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, <clears throat> uh, Prahlad Maharaj is encouraging us to take full shelter of Krishna. And we also hear that we shouldn't imitate. We also hear what? That we should not imitate. We should not imitate, yes. Or the phrase that we are not there yet. Okay. And so my question is... How can we tell if we're uh, b 
being realistic when we're not constantly engaging in devotional service or when we're um, um, using the phrase we're not there yet as an excuse to not take full shelter of Krishna. Well, if I've understood your question correctly, one of the ways to tell is it, you know, are, are we genuinely, on the one hand, you know, situated properly in the do in shelter of Krishna? It's is the the mood and the behavior consistent or sustainable? Is there consistency in, in other words? One's chanting, one's following the principles, one's observance of, you know, holy days and, and codices and, you know, is there, is, is, is one's performance in devotional service steady and, and sustaining over time? And then the other is uh, to say I'm not there yet as just an excuse to not surrender, that there should be, that the answer to that is, we had a whole seminar in Gita Nagri, I'm sure you heard about it if you weren't there, um, acceptance and surrender. So acceptance is recognize what my position really is and striving to go the next step, a sustainable, this is now back to the first part, but a sustainable step in the direction of full surrender. So what's a, what's a step that I can take? And I may not take it immediately. I may not start with 64 rounds. I may start with one. Or I may then go to, you know, so. But it, 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 we should, there should always, Bhakti Manod Thakur teaches this way. One can be identified as a karma yogi, jnana yogi, or dhyan yogi if there is not further impetus to take the next step. Then one can be identified according to that status. However, one can be a bhakti yogi that's emphasizing this and then aspiring to go to that and then the next thing because they're progressive. So the, the, the answer to your question is if there's a desire, a hankering to, on the one hand, accept this is my position, and on the other hand, aspiring to go the next step. I'm sustaining according to where I am, and I aspire to go to the next step. And I'm openly and eagerly considering what's the next step not artificially jumping, but eagerly and consistently, as steady as the performance is, eagerly and consistently uh, striving or hankering to come to the position where I can go the next step. Then it's not just a lame excuse. Then it's, you know, self-honesty and progressive bhakti. And if it's not progressive bhakti, then we're in some other category of yoga, striving to go the next step, incrementally, but striving to go the next step. Shiva Prabhupada ki, yeah. Prahlad Maharaj ki, yeah. Gaur Pimanan.